is that on at least 13 different occasions, this lava was voluminous enough that it formed dams across the Colorado River. In fact, one of these dams was over 2,000 feet high inside the Grand Canyon. And on five different occasions, these dams failed catastrophically. It could have been even more, maybe all 13 of them did. But we have actually found deposits that are hundreds of feet above the modern river and boulders that are 100 feet in diameter made of these lava dams. And these huge outwash floods must have happened because when a lava dam was in place, it would form a reservoir that backed up into the canyon. In fact, one of these natural reservoirs may have stretched all the way up to Moab, Utah, completely filling the lower one-third of the Grand Canyon and all of Glen Canyon. So these are very, very exciting ideas. Imagine if you were camped up there on that flat plateau on the right overlooking the lava dam, and you could see a 2,000-foot waterfall in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Imagine if you were lucky enough to be there when uh, the volcanoes erupted. You can see lava cascades at night going down the rim of the canyon. Or imagine if you were lucky enough to be on that spot camping when the lava dam catastrophically broke. Imagine what that would look like and sound like. Those scenes have actually happened inside the Grand Canyon. So this is a wonderful, wonderful place. I can't express to you enough the world-class significance of the Grand Canyon. There's five million people here that come to visit it, and, and two million of them are foreigners. And it is one of the seven wonders of the world, and there's a reason for it. There is no other place on the planet that has a landscape like this. So because it's close to us, we sometimes take it for granted, but uh, it's, it's just a marvelous place. And so I was very happy tonight that you would come out and, and listen to the slideshow. There's still a lot of mystery and intrigue that is involved in this fantastic place. And thank you very much for coming out here. I guess you can tell I get a little excited about that. It's such a wonderful place, and I hope you all get excited too. Now, I will take a few questions if any of you have any questions? I know that it can be, you know, overwhelming at times, but yes, in the back there. Uh, I'm really interested in, in the glaciation periods. And can you give me an estimate? I do a lot of interpretive geology there, natural history. Uh, in classic, you know, five to six million year period, how many glacial periods have there been in the world that may have caused huge? Uh, okay. Well, from studies in Antarctica and Greenland. The general idea or the general thing that is coming to light is that for the last two million years, we have had 100,000 year long periods where the glaciers were in existence. And all of those glacial periods are interspersed with about 10 or 15,000 years where the glaciers retreat back. So for two million years, that would be about 10 or 12 different cycles of glaciation. We happen to be living in one of these interglacials right now. The last time the ice was extensive was about 10 or 12,000 years ago, okay? And so by looking at the ice